Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Tomorrow is opening day. This morning, didn't have a great hunt. Deer didn't move like usual. We just got set up in the middle of this bedding thicket. Um, we've been saving this spot for the rut. It's a nice, I think it's a nice buck. It's a 170. That was money. I think he's down right up there. 10 yards. Woo! Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. That OG real dream. This is the Whitetail Legacy Podcast with a special announcement from the one and only homie. We got big bucks on K! You heard it right, guys. Big bucks on cam, and we got beers cracking. You might have heard some special effects in the first 30 seconds of this episode, but that's just how we roll. We are so freaking jacked. We paid big money to get special yeah. effects. Yeah. Uh, season is here, and it's time to get, get down and get ready to go. We are so jacked after this last tra- cart card pool 13 you can't even talk it's so yeah, good 13 camera <laughs> card pool we got a lot to think about a lot of plans to make a lot of stuff that's we know it's not going to pan out to the rut we got a lot of bucks hard horned um we got a lot of exciting stuff going on uh it's going to be a good season for us we're going to learn a lot uh whether we get bucks down or not we know we're going to have some good encounters because the cams are just too good right now for it not to happen so we're going to get right into the the people that make this possible get this quick, and then you guys can get in the nitty gritty of how why we are so excited about this this episode. <laughs> I'm gonna start off with Ingram. Last episode we said you know he's having a kid. That's not slowing down on the bucks. Um, he just cranked out a couple more this week. Yes, he sent me a picture of one close up. Uh, really nice, um, homie. Homie, he found a pro- props to him for finding a problem in the mount. Or the form quality and calling you and say, hey, man, I, oh. you know, I'd like to change. I want to get you the what you want. Right. But I want to get the good form for you. you right. Know? Just like I was talking, uh, I don't even know what episode it was. I, shit's running together. I said, I was talking about, you know, the form that I'm going to get. I mean, it's like a right semi shoulder, sneak, head up, right turn, offset. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked deep. about it for 20 minutes. Yeah. And then during the episode, I'm like, oh, man, I think I got it all. I know it's deep. And then, of course, magically, you know, Ingram was getting down. You know, he kind of passed it off. And uh, super cool for him to get everybody in front of us because, I mean, just like you've talked about, you know, before he was even a part of this, um, you know, put putting you off, putting you off. You know, he's a super cool guy. So, he wanted to call, double check, make sure he's doing the right thing, getting the right form, getting exactly what I wanted. Took us a minute to get it figured out because yeah. it's a lot. I mean, yeah. it's a lot, dude. Took us a minute to find it, but he was having problems with the quality of the form. Right, because he's like, "Oh, well, I think you I think it's this company of form, but yeah. you know, what what you picked out was this one, so I want to be sure it matches up, which is super He just wanted cool. to switch companies and instead make sure just, that you ins- had yeah, instead of just doing it and not checking with you, you right. probably would have never known, but he wanted to say, "Hey, I know you picked this out. I want to change it just to get the best quality mount that you can possibly get." Because it's going to be better. Yeah. Like if it wasn't going to be better, I mean, why are you calling a guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? He just wanted to clear with you, so that was super cool for That's him. That's great. I love that. Yeah. ECW Just another calls. tip. About yeah, that. ECW calls. Uh, my my kid's birthday is ten four, and he's gonna be getting that grunt too for his birthday. So hell yeah, he's probably, not, he's probably gonna love a Paw Patrol toy more than that. But <laughs> I guarantee you he's gonna be blowing that thing more than he's playing with the Paw Patrol toy. So oh yeah, yeah. So oh yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. But I'm super excited of that. Uh, Ingram or ECW calls anything you want custom engraved, he can do it. If you want your kid's name, you want a date. You want a buck that you're chasing his name. You know, you want that buck, mm-hmm. you know, carved on there. He did our logo carved on a call. We got him right here in front of us. If you want that buck. Man, that is something we have not yeah, even thought about. If you about, want that, that buck is super good. carved on there. Or if you, you're like, you're chasing a buck, right? And you found one of his sheds 
and you want that shed on there, or you got a trail cam picture of a buck that you're chasing, and you want to put that trail cam picture rack on that, he could do that. He can do that. I mean, that's epic. Dude, that would be epic. Yeah, you got that buck, and you grunt him in with that call with him all, with his shed on it. That'd be or sick. Or if you've been chasing this guy for three years, you got his last year's sheds, and yeah. you just sent a pic to Jeff. Yeah, be like, dude, dude engrave this on a grunt call. Yeah, I just grunted you in with your own yeah. rack from last year on this yeah. call. That'd all American sick. made, made by a veteran. Wow. Yeah, that'd be sick. So. <laughs> I feel like I should do that now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all we got to say about that, VIP, dude, bucks just keep hitting the ground with that thing right off early season. I mean, I can't believe the amount of deer that are getting put down. Hogs. Gator, big shout out to big. the homeless hero, man. Putting down a gator, double lung and a gator with the veteran. <laughs> That's I gotta do that. I gotta get a gator rug. I mean, uh shout out shout out Jake Rask on this one, man. He's got a gator rug in his house. I mean, I gotta get a gator rug. Uh that's just it's kinda like a bear rug. I mean, it's just something that you need. I think if house. you shoot that, you gotta you gotta get the whole damn thing done, you know yeah. what I mean? I want a European gator skull and the rug, and I want to shoot it with a veteran now. I got to shoot it with a bow. Oh, yeah. That's super cool. I, he's doing. Well, I mean. I wonder if he, like, you, you ever see that, like, they like they call it, they call the gators in. I wonder if they were down there, like, <laughs> calling them in, or if they just, like, they were on the line and he ended up shooting with a bow. And he's shooting with a mouse piece, too. Yeah. I, big, yep. big shout out to him, dude. He check got out, a whole new arm done. Yeah, he's getting a whole new arm done to be able to shoot his bow. But it's, yeah, check out the homeless hero because that guy, yeah, dude, guys, please. I'm so just, I can't even talk. That's how freaking <laughs> jacked I am. I am I almost said jacked and then almost said stoked, but I didn't know what word to use. I am jacked and stoked to get him up here in studio and take that guy out for a steak dinner and buy him a couple beers, and it's going to happen this year. For I'm sure. super stoked for that, man. Can't wait to meet up with him. Big shout-out to the veteran for putting down an 11-foot gator you know, with a pass-through on that. Can't believe that, but that's that's epic. Uh, like I said, check him out. A lot of big bucks falling. A lot of big news we got from the veteran guy. Um, a lot of big things coming for the two, 2019 season for him. Uh, be checking out that. He's got a lot of things going for the Southern boys. That's all I can let out there. So <laughs> we're going to kick it to homie with the VIP Veteran Broadhead shout-out. This week on the VIP Veteran Broadhead shout-out is sent in by none other than Matt, who owns VIP. And he sent us Preston Hancock, who served with Matt in Afghanistan. And uh, Matt just wanted to do shout-out the Hancock family. Um, for their loss of their son, uh, you know, I can't imagine, you know, us losing one of our boys to, you know, the military service, but that stuff does happen, and Matt wanted to bring that to light, so we appreciate that, and we want to salute Preston for his service and his ultimate sacrifice to our country. Yeah, and we're going to put a special place for the Hancock family on the vip board that is the board that holds up the american flag in our studio because people like preston make this country great and people like preston's family make it possible for us to do this podcast so we take this very seriously that um, is a very good idea by the yeah. way uh thank you to the hancock family um that's the ultimate sacrifice that we can't even comprehend and uh, I hope that you take this as a, as sincere a, as we can make it. You know, we appreciate what what he did. I mean, to the the highest standards. I mean, uh, my family, homie's family, and the White Tail Legacy podcast crew. Well, we we can't say enough for that. But Hancock will have a special place on that board from now on. Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna get into scent lock here. Season's coming up. Um, you know what? You know, so season is coming up. Dead giveaway. Yeah. We're days, days I know. It's away. so stressful. You know what? You know what I do not have time for? What? Shitty, dirty diapers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know where I have this Oz Radio 400B planted? Where's that? Literally four feet from my diaper pail. There you go. Letting it rip. Yes. As soon as diapers are going in there, yeah, 
I, You're going to be hitting it. Hitting the off. I don't have time. I'm trying to be in the stand, trying to be out here tasting big You don't bucks. want to smell like a dirty diaper. Absolutely there, not. Yeah. I have no time to clean the nursery. Yeah. I'm just going to be hitting the Oz. Yeah. I'm going to be grabbing out. the baby and rolling out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean yeah. I I'm, ex- I'm excited to utilize the Oz bag with the 500. Um, got all my shit washed. Going to be throwing it in there, giving it that final protection as I go to the field. Going to be putting my like my range finder, my release, stuff like that that I can't wash. Get in there. Do not lose that extra battery you got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get in there. Yeah, I know my range finder. Whew. Can Boy, we... That's another story to tell. Yeah, I we, we... <laughs> my range finder uses battery while not using it. Like the most inconvenient moment it'd be like low battery. So we now haven't covered this, that story, but we this I, season I I'm packing to. a battery in with me. That's plain and simple, just in case it goes down. And plain and simple, I need to buy a new range finder. But you know, I'm I'm trying to pick out which one I want. I got an idea one. I want to. You know, want to get some more info on it, mm-hmm. and then go from there. Mm-hmm. That might be Me coming too. in the in in the future for future this podcast. podcast. Um, I might be stepping up my game in the rangefinder field. Hopefully, get that on and uh, get it figured out. All right, this is our episode. Oh, no, oh. Uh, just to say right now, you heard from the the first thirty seconds <laughs> of this episode. <laughs> we are beyond jacked. This is the moment. This is like. When you're going to the World Series and you're up by two, I don't even know sports, <laughs> and I'm talking this yes, nonsense. He don't even know what up by two means. I don't even know what that There's means. There's still two more to go. Yeah, I don't even, but you know what I mean. You're you're up and you're going in, and it's game time. You know, this is the time to break it, make it shine or not shine. Be be a nobody. All you gotta do there is spit on it. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta get you got you know. And here we go. What what do we got going on? We got every property we got. Has got potential. Everyone we got is on fire. Right on. I mean, I do. So if you follow us on Instagram, which you should, click that damn uh, follow. It's follow on yeah. on Instagram, right? Yeah. Yeah, you should definitely click that damn button. Uh, we put up a whole story, a whole day. Yeah. Of Literally, I mean, thirteen over eight hours. Thirteen trail camera pulls when it was. Like ninety eight out, <laughs> dude. It and the was mosquitoes. Hot. The mosquitoes were off uh, the chain. Oh, uh, mosquitoes like, like puppy dog style. So dog out there. on the on this on this episode, do you just want to go through like that whole day? Yeah, let's just start. Let's just start from your property and go go on. Oh no, we we got to start before that. No, oh, okay, yeah, wow. okay, yeah, we got to start with you being late. So Cody, Co- Cody Snapchat me just. just Oh man, dude, I'm working late. Oh, I'm out here. I'm busting my balls. And blah, blah, blah. He's like, all right. He gets home. He's he's chilling out. He's like, all right, man, dude. What time do you want to leave? I said, well, maybe eight, eight thirty. Which I told him on the phone, eight thirty, eight thirty ish. And then I got to think about it. I was like, well, we got a forty-seven minute drive one way and then back. So I was kind of playing the mathematics out. So I was Terrible like, math. I, I, <laughs> I was like, man, dude, we should leave him like seven thirty. I was like, if you're going, if you're going to my piece, which I gave him the option, and then he just kind of, you know, throws it in my face. I gave him the option. I was like, you don't have to go. I said, you know, I let you hunt it a couple, years a couple ago. years ago, one time. <laughs> I'm still hearing about that shit. <laughs> got got to bring it up. But I was like, dude, you don't have to go. You know, I, I understand what what you're trying to do. I said, I'll just go Let, down let's there. Let's make this clear. I was out to. 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. working, oh. just to make that clear. 11 p.m. Now, now we can move on to the story. <laughs> okay, so he's like, "All right, 7:30, I'll be at your house. Cool, cool. I mean, it's 10 o'clock at this point. Cool." So I'm up. I'm like, "Man, dude, I gotta be up at like 6:45. I'm laying in bed. Well, it was like seven was was when my alarm was set, and I was just laying there. I was like, "Man, dude, I got I got to do a couple extra things that I wasn't really planning on because I didn't know if you're gonna go or not." I was like, "All right, six forty-five. I'm getting up." And then who's Snapchatting at seven after ten, just running his mouth, Cody? And then he don't even show up to my house on time. Like he said, he said seven thirty personally, but he don't even show up at seven thirty. I was there like seven thirty eight. He's like, oh, dude, I gotta get a burrito. I had to at stop. Casey's. Yeah, I had to stop <laughs> and get a diet Pepsi from Casey's. You know, I'm on the diet. I had to get some caffeine in me, get a kickstart. Um, you know, uh, 
I just worked, I don't even know how many hours, and I went to bed, and now I'm up six hours later going pool trail cam. So, Is your uh, back okay? Yeah. All right. I'm feeling good. And then he made me carry a stand in. I no. Mean. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. There, I at least know there's five people who know that's bullshit. <laughs> he so, said, he said, oh, I'm going to carry that. We had to hang a double set, you know? So he's like, I'll, okay, there's already a single set there. Yeah. Just, we just had to hang another stand. He's like, I'm going to carry that in. So I perfectly, purposely grab it out of his truck and like hike it in. And I don't even know where I'm going, but I'm like 100 yards in front of him, you know, just trying to make a point. <laughs> it was solid. It was solid. Um, all right, getting right off, right off Cody being late. We have a. I, I put out a sick time. Well, I didn't put out, but I got a sick time lapse of my 47 minute drive. Uh, these cameras have been soaking since August 10th. I got one. We've had a camera there before and it's picked up some really good midday light bucks describe where the how the camera's set up maybe um, for the listeners so what what made you decide to hang a camera there so it's right on the edge of doe bedding and it's also a good funnel for them coming off the fields in the morning for the rut or early season a, a little bit of both a little bit of both like so the doe bedding is really good for the rut because the bucks will come from the backside and chase them does down the hill. So the doe bedding is a hillside. It's really thick. I mean, you can't see 30 yards once you get over on the hillside. So was your main goal for that trail camera to figure out if it was doe bedding or figure out if there's any buck screws in there uh, to get to the food source? I feel like it was to figure out if they're coming, the does are coming off the food source to the bedding. Okay, trying to figure out what the doe route is for later on. This right, okay. right. Um, and by the truck camp picks, it was confirmed. Yeah, you know, I mean, definite, does, does, doe. you know, All seven, day light, yeah. seven, seven thirty in the morning every day. Yeah, uh, had a had a a small velvet buck on there. Nothing, not shooter on on the property, but uh, it's a it's a draw with. It's one draw with it with another draw like T. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a T pinch. intersection. Yeah. yeah, it's a T intersection. Yeah. So of course in the morning we're gonna have the thermals going up. That spot's never really been like an afternoon money spot. It's always been morning, uh, especially with the doe bedding. You know, just coming in, um, and then during the rut, you know, we're gonna have so on cam we had does coming from the field, which is what we thought. But in the rut, I, I and I'm telling you, as the year goes on, the traffic is going to shift. You're going to have deer coming from the left to the right, as right now we have it coming from the right Down to the, the hill, left. from the field to the left. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then when you get that three-shot burst on a doe, you're going to have that five-second delay, and then there's going to be a buck. Yeah. Which... We've we've had a camera on that same exact tree, and that's what we've seen. It's just trying to get it. We haven't had a camera there this early, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. So, this is a spot that we sh is basically been shotgun hunted, but has not been able to be bow hunted because of the stand location. But now I fixed that, and I hung a stand to be able to be bow hunted out of. So. Uh, the early season, just like you said, you know, we're looking for more definitely in the rut. The rut is gonna, just going to be sick there. But early season. You didn't really know what it was early season. That's why yeah. you hung a camera there. Right. To, we, to be like, okay, I know this is good in the rut. I know it's really good we, doe bedding. We know doe bedding is, you know, 50, 80 yards away. Let's see what it is early season. Make sure I'm not missing out on any bucks that might be utilizing just, this doe bedding area close to just you know, cruising. Since it is such a good bedding area. Maybe there is a buck that's utilizing this, going to this food source up this pinch, and to, you know, you instead of going in there and hunting right off the bat, you utilize the trail cam and you realize, okay, I was right on the doe bedding like the previous years, right? But the buck, they're not here right now, mm -hmm. which is good because then you're not in there burning that spot when it comes to the rut. So you utilize your trail cameras not to get buck picks, which I really like. You utilize it to make sure that your what you thought was happening on this property is actually what happened. So I think that was a super good idea by you and a super good move because now you know for sure, okay, 
There's no bucks in here early. This isn't a spot that I want to hunt early. Mm -hmm. This is a spot that I know doe bedding is, a lot of does, so I have a really good shot in the rut here from previous years experience, but you haven't had a camera there previous years this early. So right. you never know the intel, but now you do. So, so. Just, just like I told you today, I could go in there October 1st, kill kill a doe. Yeah. I mean, I guarantee no it. I just every morning, does, does, and does. Single does. Does with fawns. Does with twins. Yeah. I mean, I could go in there just legit light it up. So that that just chalks it up to being a new a new spot for a cam. Yeah. In a new spot, being able to bow hunt it early instead yeah, of and, instead of having to wait it out. Yeah, and it's know? it's good to use your trail cameras other than you're not just trying to get a picture of a buck. You're yeah. trying to feel yeah. a prop you're trying to learn a property with this trail camera. Because I feel like a lot of people, shout out to Matt from Last Breath on this, you know, he said he uses his trail cameras more than just get a picture of a big buck. And I feel like we do too, but a lot of people just do that, you know? And then they get that picture and they don't dig in deeper. But you went in like, I might get a pick here, I might not, but I, it needs to be here because I need to know what's happening. You right. Know? And I legit have one buck velvet on there that's decent. I yeah. mean, there's multiple bucks on there, but... Yeah, one, one decent. One decent eight-pointer is just a basket rack, but... So I literally sacrificed that cam from kick six last year, yeah. which is last year is a mid 160. Yeah. I, I, I said, you know, I'm not putting that cam there because I need, I need to figure out this You need this to figure spot. out this new area. Yeah, this new area. Props which, to you for doing that. Which that. you can bow hunt. Like yeah. you, can, you can bow hunt where I had the camera last year, but I mean- they might come out at 25 yards. They might come out at 45 yards. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 90% of 45 yards is what I'm saying. Yeah. Now to where I got it, everything is 25 20 plus, yards. Yeah. yeah, 25 yards max. Yeah. So that's what we talk about, just making a move, learning as you go year after year, applying what you've learned from the year before because now I have a stand in a spot that has not been able to be hunted early. So, moving on to the buck nest. Yeah, the buck nest, yeah. We, we, so, we, I told Cody, I said, yeah, dude, this spot's, you know, maybe a half mile back. I said, it's not bad walk. Further review, it's like three quarter miles, so we got a mile and a half in, mile, or mile and a half in and out total, and then I was like, all right, you know, buck nest, I was like, dude, it's a, it's a cruise. And then this is where I told him, I said, well, I got to stand up already, you know, it, good tree. We just got to bump it up two foot because the ridge that the deer are on, I said, I'm almost, you know, eye level. I'm just a little above. I said, I want to get, you know, just a little bit higher. Make sure like I'm totally out of view, you know. So I, he's like, well, you know, you got the stand in your garage you know, let, let's take it, you know, maybe make a double set in the money spot. It's some, you know, if uh, one of the other two spots dries up, we just go in there. We know it's going to be money in the rut. I was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. And <laughs> so I'm, w this is after we pulled the trail cam at the first spot we just got to talk about because it's not, we want to, put all the trail cams on video mode mm -hmm. and then it's not going to video mode it's not even turning on while we're at the base of the tree but as i pulled the the memory card and we're standing there it took pictures at 743 yeah and we're there at what 10 20 yeah and we're like way in front of the camera like <laughs> yeah i walked and up and i walked up to it no pics at all no pics I, and I did it when I pulled the cam and started looking on my phone. It didn't even register. What was like? Well, why don't have pics of me? It should definitely have pics of me. I walked literally right in front of it where the deer are. But that morning, it took pictures at seven forty three. So I'm banging on it. I you know almost gave it the damn near people's elbow i'm smashing up against a tree eject the battery tray eject the memory card which i already had out um you know smacked it on my knee cody's in the stand just laughing at me checking it out he's like dude this is sick i'm down there just struggling 
He's like, dude, did you try this? I said, yeah. Did you try that? Yeah. I, tr- I you know, I tried everything he said. I was like, dude. It's, it's, then I said, did you drop it? No. No. He he did ask that. He's like, dude, what, did you drop it six feet? No. I said, dude, it's, I said, it's not even turning on. Like, it's not even giving me a battery percentage or anything. And, and when it takes a picture, it doesn't it display the battery or nothing. I'll, and then I told him, I said, well, it took pictures at 743. I said, between 743 and right now, I said, three hours, it just died. So I strapped it on my back, brought it out of the woods, and then we back out of my piece, drive over to where I got permission to access the neighbors to get into my buck nest stand. And then I told him when we got maybe 100 yards from the truck getting out of where the stand's at. I said, dude, I'm just going to drop this bitch in the back of the truck and it's going to turn on. I said, you watch. So I just put it in the back of the truck. I just set it in there and it was cool. We go to the buck nest. Cody's grabbing a stand, walking to it like he knows what the hell he's doing. Knows where he's going and whatnot. And then we get in there and the, so before on the Instagram story, we're basing this all this whole episode almost off the Instagram story. Hoping you guys follow us there. So we're looking for three bucks. One is sloppy. This would be he'll be a six and a half year old buck this year. Uh, two years ago, he's a wide ten. Last year, he was just a run down slob of a nine. I mean, just huge wide. I mean, twenty twenty inches wide, just huge wide. And then we're looking for twin towers, big eight point. Um, you know, I, I don't know what he's going to be this year, but he's the, he's the one that we didn't get on cam, but he's in the area. He's been on on uh, the west side. He's been on the east side during the rut. So, he, I mean, he's almost everywhere. So we're hoping this year he almost shrinks a little bit. He can pick one side of the farm. And, you know, the, the truck cam – hole was pretty decent over there it wasn't as good as what it was um from october 15th on i don't know the exact date i pulled it but i was gone um from the 15th uh to well the 15th was the week break so the 23rd or so we'll say uh i didn't i had the camera over there in that area but i had it deeper to where my stand was uh, which i've talked about on this podcast and then, so this year I was like, you know, it was money from oct- late October through the rut to early late season. So I'm just going to hang it on this tree early, see what happens. Got got a couple shooter bucks passing through, got sloppy passing through, but it was night. Um, he'd been daylighting, daylighting last year, late October, early November, uh, last Last November, November 7th was the last time I got a pick of him last year. So it was good to see him back. Um, Twin Towers, man, dude, I don't know. I don't know what happened. And he was the buck that I got the latest picture of in the winter. You know, it was like January 20th. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, there was snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing, but. We got some shooters on there, a lot of does. I got does bedded on cam. Um, I didn't have that last year. Uh, I went there recently, and I seen the leaves ruffled up, and I was I was really jacked, and then I checked the pictures on the cam, and it was just turkeys. <laughs> Tur- turkeys ruffling leaves up because they had, a, they had a scrape last year, you know, six, seven bucks hitting it. Yeah. And I mean that was super That's awesome. That's where a lot of your picks came from. Was that scary, yeah? You know, that so, mid October time when they're really starting to scrape. So then I third went there. Week October. I went there today actually, and you know I seen the leaves scuffed up. Nice. So. Beers are getting to me, boys. Yeah. I would say I haven't had. Be- We're gonna get into the, the to the weight match here oh, by the gotta, end of this. But you gotta cut it out. What? <laughs> no. All right. Here no, we go. We're, we're rolling. We're rolling. We're good. Yeah, we're good. We're good. So, uh, 
So props to you for hanging those cams to get that early season intel that you didn't have before. Um, let's get into the properties that you got to hunt this year for the first time. Um, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to, uh, I don't know who let him hunt these places, but shout out to him because he's a baller. Shout out. Uh, you guys have been kind of following the story of Mr. Freeze with me for the 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 duration of this podcast from when I started talking about him. Um, no surprise, didn't show up on cam. Same thing the last two years. Um, after Velvet comes off, he does not show up. Um, I've got a bet with homie right now <laughs> as when he'll show up on cam, and I'll shout it on the podcast. The 22nd to the 27th of November, I'm going to get a pick of him on my piece. He will come back late in the rut, and this year I'm going to be ready for him. I got a good plan of where I'm going to set up on him. If I got the the right wind in that area, I'm going to be hunting nothing but that stand back, or those two stands back to back to back. I'm going to just gangbuster it, because it's my last year hunting this property, so I'm not afraid to burn it out. Right. And I got two years of intel <clears throat> that he comes back to this piece year after year late rut so i'm going to be hitting that spot hard do you have cams and you have cams on both of these spots now yep i got cams on both of them spots now so i'm going to be so last, those. last year which one was he hitting the north he hit the north they're both on the north he hit the the one by the grass on the or field. the one by the acorns the field Ooh. north on the field Okay. I pulled the back cam after we're, I shot my buck. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to name them two stands. Yeah. I mean, because so I mean, right now it's kind of cloudy. Uh, <clears throat> let's say the six and a half stand because I shot a six and a half year old buck out of it. Okay. And um, I think we can name that the acorn stand because I was getting stand, nailed yeah. with acorn. Okay, the acorn there. stand and the corner stand. The corner stands the one up. The corner the stands up by the field transition zone corner stand that's the acorn stands in the back so i pulled the cam on the acorn stand after i shot my buck because i didn't plan on going back in there because i had all that commotion of shooting my gear you just took the cam down just took the cam down. you didn't just pull the card you pulled the whole whole thing thing down and moved it so i don't know when he was daylighting there but he was daylighting in the morning november 26th november 27th both days on the north set back to back in the morning. And was your cam where it is now? Yes, exact same spot. So that's why he's... He was chasing, he was following a yearling <clears throat> doe out to that field in the morning. So he come on the west side of that cam? He came... From the picture? Where we got the pictures of the bucks this time? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He but, came that direct trail. The, the picture you got on Twitter is him coming yeah. on the... He's pretty much coming straight north, side? straight north, coming in on the west side of it. Yes, he's coming from the north, headed south, going into my piece. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. right there. But he's not coming like on the trail to the right of the cam. He's coming to the left, yeah. doing some bullshit, yeah. whatever. Come, yeah, no idea. Chasing the doe, or the dough. W- yeah. So he he's probably there, but I think he, I think he comes back there as like a last ditch. Right effort. Man, dude, know. that grass is still tall late season. Yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah, it stands now, up. Now that I've actually been there. Yeah, it stands man. up pretty good. Yeah. That's... But that walnut tree got that shade spot. You can get a good shot <laughs> right there. So, yeah, that's that's a story on Mr. Freeze as a point of right now. Um, <clears throat> he has not showed up. No surprise. Sidekick, though, big shock that he had, didn't show up. Mm-hmm. Not really sure where Sidekick went. So Mr. Freeze was 174 last year with sheds. Sidekick did not find his sheds, did not get any late season picks, got early season, mid season rut picks, seen him during the rut, uh, missed an opportunity, friend missed an opportunity on him during the rut. So <clears throat> missed uh, no trail cam picks to him is kind of weird. I'm not really sure what happened there. Um, that one trail camera was kind of messed up with but, beans getting blown over but and stuff. I still think if if something was coming out there, like it, something would have set it off. Even even the way that it was angled after it got messed up, we don't know what messed it up. I mean, I've had plenty of squirrels and coons, and I mean, we had coons on there before when it was sweet. Yeah, you know, so uh, you know, 
who knows what happened to it, but yeah, something it, happened it to was that a camera. little jacked up. Something happened to that camera where it wasn't faced to where I wanted it to be. I still think you would have seen a left beam from Sidekick because he's so damn wide. I don't know if those beans just turned brown and he just rolled out and he's back in the back somewhere. I, I feel like he's still around, though. Oh, yeah, he's got to be. I feel I like mean, he's, he's around. I don't feel... Fully he, healthy. He didn't... No, I mean, he didn't leave after Velvet like Mr. Freeze did. And then oh. come back. He was there during he, he, duration. He had him all year. He was there and yeah. then there. He was there and there. Uh, so, what do you think about if he was three and a half, and then this year he's four and a half, and he's, like, expanding his range like they might do? And yeah. Then, and he then, could be doing that. I feel like... I feel like if he rutted in my area, like I seen him last year... That we have a really good chance of seeing them this year. Yeah, like, I don't know if that's just like my. I hope what happens <laughs> right because uh, it he is he's a mainframe nine uh, split G twos kickers on the base uh-huh. probably in the one mid one sixties right giant deer, Ma, I mean giant unbelievable deer. Mister Freeze is much bigger. We need but, we need forty Tasco cams. Yeah, we need a bunch of cams out there to get the full deal. But uh, you know, with the budget we got, this is we're just kind of giving you the update on what we got. So after the you know, then you know, everybody says you got that velvet switch where when they're about to shed their velvet or something, they switch. So M sixteen, uh huh, no picks, nothing. No. So you just got him one time, right? Yeah. One time, yeah. So I don't know if super he, gnarly deer. Yeah, super, super gnarly tall. deer. Super heavy, super tall, sixteen inch bread, maybe. Sixteen, maybe. Yeah, he had what, twelve, thirteen points. I mean he had shit <laughs> going on. Split <laughs> yeah, twos, say, split I threes. Can... Really tight, really heavy. I mean Yeah. Kind of weird for yeah, your piece, I yeah, think. Yeah, kinda weird for like, my piece. Like that would be more my piece. So like I if think... he was on my piece, I'd be like, Well, that's typical older deer. Yeah. But I, I don't think, think he piece? was that old, no, though. No, I don't think so either. He didn't look that of an old deer, you know. Definitely a shooter in my book. Yeah. Um, He's disappeared, which... I thought you were going to say disabled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's disappeared, which is, you know, he, he was in velvet early, so that's no surprise. <laughs> but we got the eight with the kicker and then the super solid ten back. Yeah. So those are both... When you say super solid, I mean... Yeah. A really nice ten. Where are them at on my cam? I yeah. mean, super solid. Yeah. So I mean, and mid one fifties ten, and a really nice eight with that G two kicker. He's he's better than the ten as an eight, I think. What ten? The, oh, yeah. The the already ten. Yeah, we haven't named these deer because no, we don't know if they're going to be around. Because kind of, kind they're, of they're right at that. They're out. Of, they're right at that edge of shedding velvet with velvet still on. You know, they're that week of. Still having velvet and not having velvet. Or, like, they might have just been passing through last mm-hmm. year and you haven't matched them up. Yeah. I mean... There's so many bucks in that area, it's hard to match them up, you know? And then well, and then just, like, homeboy who grew 30 inches in a year, if I didn't have that deer shed and have so much history with it and only seen it one time, right. it'd be really hard to match that deer up with, like, oh, man, this deer grew th- over 30 inches in a year. You know, it'd be hard to match that up. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, just like the buckness. I mean, there's... Seven bucks out of it that I did not even name because I mean this just cruisers kind of a, and yeah just kind of a pass through type deal. But then once you get repeated, you know yeah. week week after week, we'll say week after week, you know just kind of showing up every time. Those are the ones you can name. Yeah, I feel like yeah every everybody's different. They're, they might give everybody that just come passing through like oh yeah we got to name him yeah. So we got them two bucks. I think that they're going to be... I think they were late enough that they will be potential shooters. Um, Any, my my seven-pointer that I had last year that was super patternable, I don't know where he's at. I don't... It's hard to tell what he turned into. I thought into. he might have been that 10. You think so? I don't know. It's hard to I'm, tell. I was counting on you to, I'm to not reaffirm real sure. that. I'm not real sure on that. It's hard for me to tell. But he was like super... He was a super solid seven-pointer last year. That... Like really nice. So, I don't know. I don't know how many points this deer was, but last year you got a pick on the mole tree in that transition time period. Mm-hmm. Is that one of them two? I don't know. I got that really nice eight, and then I got that 
I got the double main bean buck that just disappears in the summer. But see, we didn't have a trail cam deep in there early. Because I was trying to keep the pressure off. Deep deep where you shot your buck? Yeah, at oh. the acorn stand. Eh, oh, dude, I don't... It's so hard when you're hanging oh. trail cams what you want to do. Do you want to go in there and get the intel? Because... <laughs> You're not gonna. It's not gonna be the same for later on in the season. You know, what I mean, it's no. gonna be completely different. So, but yeah. So we got them bucks. Um, so that property, it's it's. <clears throat> go ahead. Go ahead. The, okay. and t- go ahead and tell me what it is because I'm waiting for it. It is. The property is notoriously really good during the breath. It is. It's really good early season if you got a cold front. I know where the buck bedding is. I'm almost. I'm ninety percent sure that there there be a buck bedded there. A mature deer, a mature buck. So, you game get, plan on there. I can I can tell you where the acorns are dropping right now. Yeah, <laughs> acorns are dropping hard. That's what my hard. buck was in there. So, Rainer about a, got a concussion. Yeah. So, <laughs> early season, if we get a cold front, that's where we're gonna be. We're gonna push in there like I have. I shot two bucks October fifteenth evening. Middle of the October lull on that piece, uh, 200 yards away from each other. So, so whole boy was on. He was in November. The 10. What are you calling that stand? The uh, corner stand. Yeah, corner stand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The top, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the nine inch brow 10 was on the corner stand. And then last year's buck was on the acorn stand. Acorn stand. Okay. All 250 yards apart. Right. So, yeah. the, if we get a cold front, we're going to be there. Um, hopefully, we can get it all on video and show you guys, and I'll show you guys kind of how, why I set up there. You know what, and yeah, try to be... try to teach you guys a little bit. Like, not that I know what I'm doing more than anybody else, but just try to teach you guys through the film why I'm sitting there, or not really teach, maybe tell you guys why I'm there, why I feel like this is a good spot. Um, I showed homie the sets. Um, what. I we, got, we, got in the, we got in the stand, and then you seen <laughs> does bedded, like, right over yeah. there. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> The corner stand, I, I was maybe not quite in the stand, but I was in the stand, and I was like, dude, there's a deer running away. And then maybe a minute later, it finally, like, got out of view. So definitely... Um, a good spot, and you can sneak just, in that stand and see deer bedded. Yeah, just just like you said, you know, you can, you were telling me, oh, dude, you can sneak right in here, and deer are gonna stay down. But then, you know, you be in the stand for two hours, and then they'll just funnel right out. And then when after we got done with that stand, and you're like, all right, you know, this is the money. Yeah, and then we went deep to the back stand, the acorn stand that we're gonna call it. Um, dude, that is sick. Yeah. Like, I wish, I wish the access was better. Access, like I told you, uh, that stand is either you're going to kill something or you're bumping deer. Oh, dude, I wish it was. There's no. Way I, w- to get I wish you could just walk the. Can you walk the fence? Can you just walk the fence the whole way? That'd be a terrible idea. Terrible idea. Yeah, because they're bedding in that grass. Oh, dude. They're bedding I, everywhere, but they're bedding in that grass more what, than they are in that. Tree. How How is the acorn stand in the morning? No go. If you're going to go in there morning, okay. you, you're going to have to go in there and you're hunting all day and you're not leaving. Okay, so I don't have to worry about going in there and not finding it. No. Okay. No, the only way, if you're going in there in the morning, follow that ridge line down and you get in that stand and I would suggest you never leaving it until it's Oh, dark. yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just worried about getting there. Like, I got to get there. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not. But. It's kind of like the bus net, buck nest stands. It's in, it's in some thicker stuff. You know, it's right. harder to find. But once you get back in there a couple of times, there'd be a really solid deer trail that you can follow. And then you follow that to that ridge, and when it crosses a ridge, we turn right. I would say it was just when we when we, when we left the corner stand, we went kind of down. That's what you want to do, which yeah. is on the kind of the deer trail, and then we kind of veed back to it. Yeah, you want to get down to get out because it kind of crowns. I just want right to go there. straight. I just want to go. No, you got to get down and kind of crown out because those deer are bedded in that CRP, 
And if you get in their line of sight, they're going to see you. But if you get over that crown, just break that ridge. Remember I said you're going to be further down than we are right now. You're going right. to be kind of towards on this ridge. Yeah. Because everything down here is already ruined because your scent's blowing Up there. Up there, yeah. Yeah. Your scent's blowing there. So it's already it's Dumb. already cashed but, out. Yeah. You know? Right. So you're risking going in here. And that's why I said I only hunted that stand three times last year. And one of them was successful the first hunt. And the second, the second third time was in the rut. And I passed shoot or deer that if I wouldn't have shot a deer earlier, I would have shot deer. Like I said, you're going in there. You're not going in there to hunt. You're going in there to kill a deer. Right. It's a different stand set for me. It's like walking into the buck nest. You go in there, you're going in there to kill a deer. You're not going in there to, to hunt deer, you know. And it is, like I said, it's super risky. And when people are like, man, you're going that deep this early. If I feel like I got a good cold front with a good wind and it's windy, like I said, it's got to be windy to go in there early. You got to have some cover. It's got to be raining. It's got to be windy. There's got to be something to get you in there to where they're not going to hear you. You know, I think from what I've seen right now, a uh, 10 plus mile hour wind northwest. Yeah. Northwest is the perfect. With <clears throat> a, a little degree drop, dude. Yeah. Them acorns are dropping right now. Yeah. Right now. But I mean I and think, then and I, then you can see that transition where it goes from white oaks to just thick. nasty thick stuff. Oh, it's and that's super what that thick buck did there. came right out of that thick stuff. Hot right in even, there and started. After actually acorns. being there, I can't even believe you got him on film where you did. Yeah. Hitting the scrape. Super and then thick. and then two giant trees fell there this year too to make it even better. <laughs> you couldn't so, plan that better. No. So that that the the lease it's going to be an epic year on that just from trail cameras and from previous year um I've got it pretty figured out. Um the next property um Mr. Maybe we have him shedding velvet. Yep. But we do know we have no pictures of him full hard horn. No. But uh, while he's shedding velvet, I mean, he's he's, he's everywhere. You, you can't be full grown and not be shedding velvet. Yeah, he's shedding so, velvet. His G3 is gone and his brow is gone. And he's just right there on the edge of shedding velvet and not, I, I don't know. Maybe we just didn't, maybe this next trail camp pool will have a better idea. But Mr. Maybe, we called him Mr. Maybe because we didn't know if we were going to shoot him or not. Yeah, because I, he's he's velvet and... I think we both decided now that we're going to shoot him. I think he's both a shooter in our eyes. When, I mean, so he's in full, he's in velvet. We didn't see him full grown because yeah. it's the first year on the piece, obviously. Yeah. He grew a lot. Dude, from yeah. the last trail camp pole to it was a when, month. when we yeah. seen him final, you know, shedding velvet on his left main beam, and then the the G two on the right side. I mean, man, he grew a lot. I mean, I mean, he's not as deer. big as Ghost, but dude, it's a super solid buck. Yeah, I don't care. Hard, if he, I don't care if he's us. three and a half, four and a half, two and a half. A uh, super solid buck. Yeah, if if uh, a lot of people said that he's three and a half, but he would be very hard for me to pass at the stage of bow yeah. hunting that I am right now. Exactly. I will shout that out, and any haters that want to sh- shun me for shooting a three and a half year old deer, he's going to be really hard for me to pass. And yeah. I I think that he is a shooter, whether mm-hmm. he's three and a half or four and a half. Yeah. But let's talk about chaos. <laughs> <laughs> what, okay, uh, what part do you want to start with this deer? So this is this is after. <laughs> okay, so it's ninety five out. We're pulling cams. We're just sweating. Homie's done. Walk me three miles through the timber and woods, hauling stands in and stuff. Oh. And he, uh, he trekked a stand a quarter mile, and then I took over. And then we uh, go to the next piece, you know. And we're the the so this. This corner is very hard to get, hunt get out of a stand. Get the story the way you want it. This corner is very hard to hunt out of a stand, so we're going to have to blind hunt it. There's no option other than that. We've decided that. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is we, the far northwest corner yeah. of the property. So we're going we're, to we're, we're gonna have to make a plan to hunt ground blinds, which we normally don't do. And we had some straight line winds come through that were 50 plus, and destroyed my blind, broke broke it. So 
We had to fix it the best we could, get it back standing. Checked it today, still standing. Um, but yeah, we tucked it back in, brushed it in a little bit. To get a shot here in this grass, we had to do some weed eating. <laughs> um, so the reason we named this buck Chaos is, so I got my three-year-old out there, and we're pulling cams, and it's hot, and he's like, I'm tired. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go, you know, and I'm trying to just get him out there, spend some time with him. So I put him in the truck. It's hot, so I'm like, I'll leave the truck running, you know, 15 minutes, cool him off. So he's in the truck just blaring the horn gets up in the front seat just <laughs> blaring the horn we're in the we're in the hot zone where this buck is in daylight a couple days before we pulled this cam you know right before season he's in daylight he's just blaring the horn repeatedly so i get that calmed down i i tell him i said hey man you're scaring the deer and he's like oh you know okay i understand you know he's three and then so i get my weed eater out hauled it out there I'm going to start it up, but I'm going to weed this grass down that we got to get down to be able to get a shot of this buck. Just like uh, maybe a sixteenth of an acre. I mean, just yeah, literally just a little the corner, corner because this is where this buck's coming from. He might so be edging we, these evergreens. If we, would, if we wouldn't have weeded it, we would have maybe been able to get a 20-yard shot. Now we can get out to a 40. Yeah. Okay. So I get my weed eater out, fuel lines. Well, no. I lose the, <laughs> I lose the Somehow I lose the fuel cap on it. I'm like, okay, this is great. We're in tall grass. And then somehow magically I find it. And then I go to start it, and my fuel line's broken. I'm like, what is going on? I mean, this is ridiculous. So I fix the fuel line out there, you know, like Bob the Builder out there in the wilderness. <laughs> just, just fixed it right up. And here we go. We're back at it. So I'm like, I'm going to get my chainsaw out. Steel chainsaw runs like a champ all the time. <laughs> Had it for like five years. I'm going to cut these cedar limbs, tuck this blind back, get it brushed in, start my chainsaw, it'll run for 15 seconds, Dude, shut off. not even. Maybe yeah. five. Start it, run for five <laughs> seconds, shut off. So I'm like trying to get through the cedar limb like five seconds at a time, you know. Maybe a three-inch round th- yeah, cedar Yeah, yeah. I it's mean, just, it's brutal. It's a disaster. It's brutal It's watch. a disaster. Well, we get that all done. We finally get it weed-eated. <laughs> We're trying to come up with a name, and I get in the truck. And no, like, you didn't even, you didn't yeah. even touch on anything with the blind. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the blind is a disaster in itself. So, But we get it all done, and I, we're trying to think of a name about this buck, you know, and I'm like, that. I'm just in the truck. I'm like, that was freaking chaos. That was like the worst thing you could ever do or anything that could ever happen when you're trying to get something done just happened. So we named this buck Chaos, and homie's probably going to smoke him. This is the only buck <laughs> that I feel like we have a mega good shot early season. Yeah. And he is a super solid four and a half, five and a half year old eight. Just wide as all get out. Wide, heavy, tall eight. Super solid buck. Really dark horned already. Um, just a mature Illinois deer. Everything that you want in an eight pointer, he's got. Um, I think he's been. <sighs> From from what I from what the truck cam said, I think um, when he when you know when the velvet was on, the truck cam was obviously out there a little bit more, but I think hard horned been a little better. Yeah, I think he he moved because we kind of didn't we had a few pictures of him not a knot, but when he right. got hard hard horned, we got a lot more. Yeah, so I think that's gonna be his range that area you know and uh like i said that's we got so another huge thing that we talk about on this property i put the steps in to contact the neighbor to get access so we have gained access shout out to the neighbor shout out to the hunter on the neighbor for letting us gain access um to get in this property which um, I mean, it's not like we're asking to walk through the whole. No, you know, yeah, we're through just, his timber. We're just I mean, asking we're just, to just, barely touch the property, really, and just right. access this field from the west side. So if we have a south wind early season, instead of going through all this grass, we can slip in. We can slip in and be in that blind in five seconds. Yeah, you know, I mean, we can be right hit that hit the property being the blind. You know, so what I mean? is corn right now on the corn and beans on both. the east. Yeah. Just straight east the field. What do you, what do you feel like is gonna happen when they pick 
that right by the cedars. I have no idea. I think it's going to go down. Yeah. I do. I have I no think idea. Be- Being the first year, I can't call that on this property. Be- and then there's like, I was looking at it as I was driving by today. I mean, there's maybe 12 rows of corn just straight north, you know, right behind the blind, I will say. So mm-hmm. just maybe 12 rows of corn right behind the the blind. And then in between the the cornfield that we're just talking about and the blind, the cornfield right behind it, like it's a corner. Mm-hmm. And then there's a bean field. I mean, just a giant bean field. And then we got this this trail cam in that pinch in between, between the, the two between corns. the two corns going right and through the bean field. Right through and there. they are literally Does, pinching small bucks, right giant there. bucks. Everything's we called that pinch perfect. Yeah, right we there. we called the pinch perfect early. Yeah, but I'm afraid. If these bucks are betting, because we have we have chaos going in, and we have going out at seven thirty at night. I mean, yeah. wh- which just random wh- as hell. Wh- which is good. Yeah. Which is good either way. I mean, if he's going in or out, but at seven thirty, I mean, it's money right now. Mm-hmm. But you know, we we want him coming in every night at seven thirty, or we want him going out every night at seven thirty. Yeah, which we got a couple hard horn. Couple nights in a row where he's going Co- out at seven thirty. Exactly. So you know, cu- so our next nights trail camera pool will be majorly big on figuring out whether we, we're going to shoot that deer or not. We want him. Man, I don't know. I don't. I think he's bedding a lot closer than we think he is. I I think we need the the corn to stay in right now. Well, it's staying in right now. I think I think we need to days. stay in until at least October twentieth. Yeah. We need we need the corn to stay in. I think we need to have them stay in the first week, and then we go in there and crush Or, <laughs> how, so you've been scouting the beans. The, yeah. The pinch between the bean or the pinch between the cornfields is the beans, giant bean field. How? I mean, is it yellow? Is it brown? Brown. It's brown. It's just been brown. Yeah, it's been brown. So it was, it's been brown since he's been hard horn. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he's still coming from there. Yeah. I think I think he's hitting that field. I think he's using those cedars as a pinch. He's hit running those oh, yeah. cedars down and crushing in that corner. And I think he's going to do that. Going only, out or coming in? Going out. Going out. The okay. only thing I think he might change is it's going to get later. It's going to get later at night than seven thirty. Yeah. When it when it gets crunch time, when those cornfield gets out and he loses that security cover, it's going to get later. So we're going to have to move further towards the south if. Either we're going to have to move further to the south or further to the east. But, like the stealth cam, we need to move, maybe move that when we pull again to the east or the south to see if we can get him. I think to the south. 30 minutes earlier. You okay. know, or see, you know, see if we can get him. Because he wasn't on it, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't on it, so we know he's not bedded in that draw. Right. But, you know how we cut that corner going up there? He could mm-hmm. be bedded right there where that, 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 real low tree is that I'm talking about we can hang a stand in there and shoot where those rubbed cedars are he could be right there where that creek comes out further north than where the stealth cam is or he could be further south where like me and you both think he is he's further south so you guys are just listening to me and homie game plan right yeah now. i was like <laughs> this this is legit game plan yeah so you guys are getting first hand just game plan knowledge so that stealth cam we should leave the exodus where it's at we got them all on video mode we should roll that stealth cam if we get video of him cutting that corner from the south like we had, did before because there's a the wildflowers or the crp yeah separates and there's a little yeah so he you can tell draw whether he's coming or, from the south or the it's east not a draw but if I he's mean, coming from the east he's gonna be straight broadside if he's coming from the south he's gonna be ankle and so you want to turn the stealth cam just a touch. 50 degrees yeah, to and, the west. And then move. No, I want to move that stealth camp all the way down on the south side. Toward on those cedars. Following that trail that we mowed. Okay. See if he's coming from that the way. Whole, the whole way? You want to see if he's coming the whole way? Yeah, I want to see if he's coming from that way. To know whether we need to pop that blind in the cedars 100 yards okay. further to the south. And and just hunt the side like we're going to try to get a ladder stand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So now you're talking about doing a whole bunch of shit while before season. Just moving a cam. We're gonna be moving a cam, leaving the Exodus. We need to see what the Exodus says to get direct yeah. intel, 
and then well, I can barely get you to check the damn Exodus. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just <laughs> the pressure, man. I don't know that that piece is going to be know. sensitive. I think I think if we come from, come in from the west, got like, it, like it we got all permission, is going to be dependent just, on the wind. Dude, we need it. We need a south wind. We need a south wind this for cold front's one, of yeah, south one of three wind. days. Yeah, we need a one of three days. We need a south, south wind. wind or an east. <laughs> If we had an east, yeah. it'd be even better. Yeah, but that's east would pretty be rare. Sick. Sometimes it's you know it's there, but if we had an east or a south, I feel really comfortable going and getting that. If we're gonna pull the south cam, it might be better just to drive all the way in there and pull them though. The Exodus on the south? No, the stealth. If we're gonna pull the stealth cam and move it, oh, it might be better just to drive in there, well, in it, the truck, it, and do it. We could at least drive. Because we need to get some chairs in that blind and everything, anyways. Yeah. Um. So much. Lord, we need a south wind. Yeah, we need a south wind. <laughs> south wind for one to three days. Yeah. Last week of September. Yeah. So we've been killing you on that. We were just over here game planning because that's like the one buck that I feel like we can kill early. Yeah. Definitely. We got a really good shot on him early. Um, by what the trail cams are saying as of right now, I don't even know what to score him as, so I don't. E- I can't even. <laughs> I have no idea. Just, you guys know. just a really solid eight, uh, four and a half. Just I would wide be very, as all get out. I'd be very happy to shoot him. I mean, he's not going to score great because he's just an eight, but he's going to just a beautiful, nice deer, mature deer, you know. And that's what we're after, Wes. If it gets us going, we're going to shoot it, and that one's. That like, one's getting me. We got going. them both on cam. We're like, ooh, shit, <laughs> you know? So, Mr. Maybe's getting me going right now. Yeah. So, we're going to talk about we're an hour deep already. So, we're going to talk about public real quick. We're going to wrap it up. So, I threw three trail cameras on public. If anyone wants to try out the $28 <laughs> Casco from Walmart, I highly suggest it. I've got some really good picks from that Tasco. I'm blown away by the quality that I'm getting out of a $20 cam. Twenty or thirty dollar cam, Exodus, dude. The warranty is unmatched. If you want to, we love our Exodus cams. Um, Moultrie, I love them too. But dude, I mean the twenty eight dollar cam. I don't know if I'd put that on my pup, my private ground, but public with a chance of getting stolen or vandalized or something. That's the way to go, dude. If you knew that that spot on private ground was just straight nighttime, yeah, and that's all you cared about, dude. Yeah, if you Why wanted to get, not? if you want, if you had some good cams, you know, on like a scrape or something, and you wanted to just get another cam to get more intel, right? The only thing I worry about the Tasco is like the flash, because it, but it didn't seem to scare them deer at all. I got oh. multiple pics of them standing and right then, in front of it. Then you got people on Twitter be like, "Oh yeah, well I got a Tasco, but it does a white flash." Yeah, deer still hidden is what they're saying. Yeah, it doesn't seem to affect them. I don't know if it's just because it's. I think public deer would be more apt to that, but I don't know if they've seen a lot of trail cams because people were afraid to run trail cams on public. Right. But, I mean, I got coyotes right in front of it, uh, not not spooking, does, very mature bucks. I got a buck on public, on cam, that's in the 160s, guys. Giant buck. I got another 10 that's in the 150s. Really nice buck. The 10's got kicker off his two, kicker off his three, junk on his brow. He's got a lot going on. Um, got to make a game plan on him. I hung a perimeter stand. This is nighttime picks, so this is way off the wall. But, I mean, it is nighttime, but it's not that. It's not that late. Yeah, I, it's like, I, what, I know where they're coming from. Yeah, I know where they're So right now, that's 40 minutes after dark. Yeah. So I got to figure out where he's coming from 40 minutes. You know, it's not like midnight or something. Yeah. So that, I, that, That's what I was trying to get. I, I have mean, a really good late. idea of where he's at or where he came from, from the picks, because I got it on three-shot burst. So I'm going to make a move on one of my cams to there, leave that one, and try to connect the dots. Um, best thing about public, I'm not afraid to go in there and check the cams every week. I feel like I'm going to. I feel like that's what I need to do there. These pe- these deer are used to uh, used to activity, and I'm not checking them in sensitive areas. I'm checking them on field edges in the middle of the day, so I don't feel like I'm busting deer. But where I have the cam at, does on daylight all the time, <laughs> so I know I'll be able to shoot a doe off public. Get that out of the way. Um, got some small bucks daylight, some nine decent bucks daylight, uh, but the two shooters are night. Um, 
couple different days, a couple different times. They are big. Yeah, they're big. big they're big for public. Oh, so geez. I'm super excited about that. It's just typical. I go out, hang cams on private. Cody goes out, hang cams on public, and he's got the giant. <laughs> you just put the work in, <laughs> figure out where they're at. Think outside the box of where other people wouldn't think. Like, literally, I don't want to give my spot away, but who would hang a cam there? I don't know, but you try to call me out on a Snapchat, and I was like, "How does it? How is that hard work to get drawn?" <laughs> no. Anyway, it's, it's, moving on. Yeah, it's. Um, we, I've been hunting this piece we, for three which years spot? to find which my, spot? the one where I got the picture of the bucks. Would you be like, "Oh, this is a good place to hang a no. cam on public"? No. Or would the, you be like the second the second cam you had? I would yeah. probably I would I would hang cam there. Yeah, that'd be I nice. I would hang a cam there, and I uh, left that one there because that one okay. But the the one the where I got the first one, no. Most people be like, no, I never no. knew that. You know, I'll I'll let you guys but, know. It's super close to the road. It's really <laughs> close to the main road. Uh, it's not really close to a parking lot. I have some secret access. Which, if you've known anything about this podcast, I'm all about access. That's my number one. <laughs> Just like I got brand new property. I made the connections, two Facebook messages, a couple phone calls, text messages, boom, I got access. You know, you got to do that stuff. That's that's how you get in on these deer. I got sweet access, which other people wouldn't have, where they would have to walk a lot further to get to this spot, which makes my spot a little bit easier to get to. Humble brag. But no one would hang a cam there, man. No. no They're like, I, I dude, don't... this is 60 yards from the road. No big deer is going to be here. <laughs> And what I tell you, if I get a picture of Buck here, it's going to be dark. It's going to be, oh, yeah. I know that. Right. But I'm just trying to get, I've hunted this property when, three years, but I've never hunt. When do they hunting. normally take the corn out? They take. They already took it out. Oh. They were taking it out while I was out there. It's gone. Damn. Man, that's going to. They're going to work could, that pinch. It's going to work better for me because now they're not going to be, they're not going to. What gonna pinch? F- what pinch? The pinch, pinch on that hillside where they're gonna work there's only like an 80 yard strip of woods there where they're gonna have to work open grass or open field so how about where they're going how's how's that because i mean it's that's, corn across the road i mean i feel like in the picture they're going west they're going west west is across the road mm-hmm Apparently, I'm all spun around. You're all spun around. Yeah, <laughs> west west is across the road. They're coming from the east to west. Um, okay. I found a trail where I thought they were going through this woods to cross the timber and I to the other side of the road, and I got lucky and nailed it right on the dot. So, But I'm going to just move the cam it, back, get a better game plan, and I'll have more intel for you guys. Is this the so. cam on the south? Um, on the very where the west scrape, side. Where the scrape hood is? No. No? Okay. No. That's the... This is the one that's right by the road on the very east side. Where I got the bucks. It, we, uh, yeah. You say that, but... I'm he's so confused. So, I'll... I'll I've, been, I've been out there twice. I'll show him. He's never been <laughs> to this spot either. I gotta keep it a secret, but... I know I know <laughs> where the second cam's at. I'll I'll, uh, I'll show him here so he's up to date, guys. But all right, <laughs> if you can't tell, we're super jacked. We hope that we got you up to date on what our season's looking like. We will be putting another one out probably after maybe the first ton of the season, the seeming like, maybe before. No. Yeah, we can. We're... We want to keep you guys up to date on what our season's going with, but we also don't want to give you a bunch of podcasts of us. We want to get other people out there. So the next week will be... Another guy, another group, some intel on, on hunting, and uh, we're going to keep it. Hunting season's here. We want to keep you up to date with what our hunting season's going with, but we also want to give you what other people has got going on, too. Co- I mean, I, if, if you're going to go that far, soon after the hunting season starts, we're going we're gonna to be piling them up. Yeah. Yeah, we're we, gonna be we got up. we got rut baby coming. Yeah, we got rut baby coming <laughs> up, so we're gonna be piling a lot of episodes. So we're we're uh, gonna be doing like punch a bunch. Yeah, we might. We're gonna try to get not just us a bunch, you know, because we want to get good content out for you. But there might be more of just us. We talk. might do like two a week or something. Yeah, we might just do like, more about us and what our hunting season's going. You know, because homie's got the baby coming. We want to get a lot of lot of stuff done. So his. He's got time to spend with this kid. 
you know what I mean? That's our that's our main goal. We're dads before we're podcast hosts, you know what I mean? Yep. So that's the main thing. So the content isn't going to suffer, but there might be more of us telling you about our story during the season because it's much easier for us to get gather, together and record than working under someone else's schedule to line up people to podcast. Or, or what will happen is we'll just have a short intro and then right into the content, which you guys might like and then we'll have to put out like a a bonus episode on a Monday or something that we that we talk about our own stuff yeah. from the weekend. And we're going to try to keep we, you up to date with our season as it goes on. Right. Even though we're going to punch a bunch and we'll do like five a night, but I can easily take the soundboard and do a 20 minute Yeah, that's bullshit. that's our main goal. We want to put out regular content for you, but we also want to keep you up to date with what we got going on during the season. Yeah. So, all so, right guys. It just sucks. It doesn't suck, but it's just we're trying to do we something. We got a lot of stuff yeah, going on. There's a bunch of stuff yeah, going on. We got on. a lot of stuff going on. We got season coming. We're hunters before we're podcasters. We're dads before we're hunters. Right. Everything's got to go down the line. So we got homie mad dad stuff coming up. <laughs> we got hunting season. We're about to get insane with the hours in the stand. And then we got podcasting on the back burner. But right on. We love you guys. We're going to be putting out content. Are you hit, are you hitting with the new signature or do yeah. you do you even remember? Yeah. Remember, have fun, make some memories, try to leave a legacy, and white till legacy out.